Hey, hey guys, it's Chuck Taylor at Cultured Cowboy Western Store behind the hat counter. And today, my associate thought it would be great if we talked about hat creases. And maybe a little something about these creases. Most of these creases had a purpose as they were done. And some of them go back to like movie days, and some of them go back to when Stetson originally put his hat together, and some of them go back as far as yesterday. So, that being said, probably for the last little bit, the most popular hats that you've seen are creased on the crown, pretty much like I'm wearing, or like this hat here. It's often called a cattleman crease. And sometimes they cattleman crease might be real narrow, sometimes it might be real wide, but it's still two rows coming across. Uh, it's just what it's called. Front of the hat, you'll see has a little bit of squareness to it and it's turned up a little bit on the sides. This is another shape that's, that's pretty good. Uh, the whole reason for a big brim cowboy hat is to kind of keep some sun protection on you. So a lot of times you know, we want to adjust that. Uh, if we're crawling through fences that are more narrow, turning the sides up is a good idea because you kind of have to go sideways to get through that fence instead of taking it off and passing it through. But the cattleman crease has been a favorite for ever since I've been doing cowboy stuff. Uh, very popular and you'll see it in a lot of our stores. A second crease that I'd like to show you is a little modification of that. It's called a brick crease a lot. You'll see it's in the shape of a rectangular brick. And uh, the shape here is just another variation of what you can do. Uh, it just looks good on you. Uh, this particular hat is kind of golden in color. The sides are turned up, a little squared front here again. This is real popular to do right now in today's society in a lot of circles. But this is the brick crease. There's a couple here that are very similar. Uh, this particular crease is not straight and parallel like a like a cowlin, and it's certainly not square or, or rectangular like the brick crease, but it's a little more narrow in the front a little wider in the back. What it does is it tends to again narrow the face a little bit, make it look a little longer if that's what you choose to do. This particular brim, uh, y'all pardon me for this, but for a long time it was called a go to hell hat. For a long time it was called a shit kicker. And I don't want to get any kind of derogatory terms here, it's just what they were called. Often in ranches in the West and the Southwest, the owner of the ranch or the head person in charge would have a hat and sometimes the hat would be just about worn out but not quite and he literally would take the hat and kind of whack it on his knee a little bit and uh, break the brim this would be a nice expensive hat but he'd break that brim and he kind of throw it out and the workers who were working the cows or working the farm they would like try to grab that hat it's a wonderful thing to wear that kind of hat and they were often called by that kicker name. So the hat became called the kicker hat too. There's also what we now commonly call the gust crease. The gust crease is a little more tailored in the front. It also is taller in the rear of the hat. So this, I've heard it called Montana crease. I've heard it called a lot of different things, but this particular hat, the reason it's called a gust is there was a movie called Lonesome Dove. And there was a character called Dust and he wore this type of hat shape in it. So it's just commonly been called the Gus. In fact, this hat band on this particular hat mimics what that uh, character in that movie was worn. This hat too has a little bow from front to rear. Now what cowboys have found is when you're running on a horse, there are some things that are a little aerodynamic. I mean, let's face it, horses can go 20, 25 miles an hour in a full out gallop. And when you see these movies and the cowboy's riding like this and he's doing good and he turns around backwards and the hat stays on his head, he's probably got a horse running scene going behind him. This hat was designed to be the best at that. Truth is, with a high wind, you guys know a hat can fly off your head like a kite if you're not careful. This is made so that when the wind comes through running, it kind of helps hold the hat on with the brim and the crown. For those of you that like the taller crowns, often it's because the higher you get off your head, actually the cooler the hat could be, especially in hot weather. Now, in rodeo circles today, 
This is what we are selling a lot of at our store. It's an open crown. It really ships in here ready to shape. And if we go back to the 1970s when I started putting hats in the store, it's kind of funny. I'd just gone to, to Dallas, Texas area, and I was at a horseshoeing school. We were learning surgical and pathological horseshoeing, and, and I love that stuff. But it was Monday through Friday. So Saturdays, I'd be in these big Western stores in the Dallas area. If you've ever been there in the 1970s, there were plenty of them. Cutter Bills, the Resistals Hat Factory in Garland, lots of different places. And I would go in on Saturdays and watch these guys shape hats. It was just the funnest thing in the world. And uh, most fun, if you're checking my grammar, they had a lot of open crown hats. While I was there for that semester, I learned how to crease hats and learned how to crease them well with their wonderful machinery and their wonderful inventory. But today's Rodeo Cowboy, this is a Bangor straw. It holds up well. It'll take a little punishment. But a lot of times, they just kind of pinch a couple of dimples on the side of the hat. Brims on these particular hats, flat like this. Sometimes they're curled up a little bit. I came back from the Texas area into South Carolina, and I immediately ordered all open hats. I thought, People would come in, I'd customize them, shape them to them. They'd enjoy watching this show, everything would be great, and I'd probably sell more hats. And the truth is, for South Carolina, I was a little ahead of my time. So I took all my lovely open crown hats, and I would need to shape them into shapes for people. So there went my open crown theory. But as cowboys from the east have traveled out west and come back, people understand now that when you see a hat with a lot of these creases in it, they're open, it's just a matter of it's ready to shape. But I want to go over one more hat style. This is a definite pinch front type of hat. Uh, this one's by Stetson. It's been very, very popular. It's uh, often called a gentleman's hat. This particular hat is Diamond Jim, and it's probably the one we sell the most of all the hats that are shaped this way. Again, we've got that aerodynamic crease, which helps you keep the thing in. The brim is much smaller, and the shape turns up a little bit. If you have any questions about hat creases, please comment below. This is a YouTube video, and that's what it's all about. Is Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this part, and we'll probably edit some things in and out as time goes. Love you guys. While you're here, there's a subscribe button. There's a bell you can ring. Get some notifications. Video's getting stronger and stronger, and we want to be a part of your life. We really do. Not to be intrusive, but just to be fun and happy. So, subscribe if you like. The channel's Cultured Cowboy on YouTube. Y'all enjoy.